welcome to another edition of Almost Martha. And today, oh my goodness, I'm going to be making something that's so good and it looks spectacular. You can serve it to your family, you can serve it at a dinner party, which I have done, and it's, it's just delicious. And people just think it's spectacular, but it's really so easy to make. And that is braised short ribs. Oh yeah, braised short ribs. I, I also wanted something for today. I could just set it and forget it and put it in the oven and walk away and do other things. And this is perfect for that. So it, it you know, once it all goes in the oven, it has to braise for about three hours. So it's not a quick meal, but boy, is it a spectacular one. So hang with me and let's make braised short ribs together. Okay, so we have four pounds of short ribs. And I know it's a lot, but if you have a big family, if you don't, it's a dinner party. If you don't, put some in the freezer and pull it out in a few weeks and boy, you're gonna thank yourself for that, right? So here are my short ribs uh, and you'll see some of them are really incredibly fatty. Now, these are, these are bone-in short ribs for some of them. So uh, it looks like the, num the ratio of bone to rib is different for each one. But I am going to cut off some of the fat. I'm going to leave, you know, I'm going to leave some fat on there. But if they're really super fatty, that just means later we're going to be skimming off a lot of this fat from the top because we don't want our, our sauce to be all fat, right? So I'm just going to see how much fat is on each one. This one had a lot of fat. I'm just going to, I'll leave, you know, you want to, you want it to have some fat in it for flavor and all that, but if it's too much, yeah, not good. Not good. I try to eat beef, you know, maybe once a week, uh, even less. Uh, but, uh, when I do eat beef, I want it to be really good, <laughs> really good. I don't eat many hamburgers, you know, all that stuff. I know it's not great for the planet. I know all that stuff, but every once in a while, you just you just want some. So this is how you fix that. Okay. So some of these are pretty good. They just have a little bit of fat, and some of them, some of them are not. So if the, the fat seems excessive, just trim it off. This one had a lot of fat on it. You know, when I went to a good butcher, which is important, but I guess, you know, sometimes it's just going to be a lot of fat. So the four pounds had a lot of fat in it. <laughs> okay, that one's pretty good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's pretty good. Maybe just slice off a little corner there. Okay. And, uh, you know, I don't like to eat a lot of fat either. But I know it's it's what flavors it and all that good stuff. And I've left plenty of fat on there for the uh, fat purists out there. So I'm just going to salt and pepper these now. And this is some, you know, big flake sea salt. I'm just going to salt these down. This is Maldon, you know, flaked sea salt, nice big chunks of it. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Pepper. Okay. And that's good. I'm going to turn these over. And then I'm just going to lightly salt the bottom. Okay. This time I'm just going to use a little bit of my favorite, that pink Himalayan salt. Okay, so my beef is ready. Uh, I also brought this beef to room temperature. Uh, so it's been sitting out for maybe, you know, 30 minutes from the refrigerator and that's, that's all good enough. And now we're going to brown this beef. So I put a, you know, a big pot on the stove, a Le Creuset, it's all going to happen in the Le Creuset. And I put just enough oil in it just to coat the, lightly coat the bottom of the pan. 
And now we're going to cook the short ribs. These will not fit in any pan, all of them. So you have to do this in batches. You don't want to crowd them in the pan. So my pan has been heating to about, you know, a medium heat. And now we're going to look at braise, well, browning the short ribs before they go into braise. So I'm, I'm browning the beef. I've put it in my pot. I'm kind of moving these pieces around just a little bit so they don't um, they don't stick to the bottom when I first put them in. But now we're getting a nice browning on all the sides. So I'm going to have to do this in batches because I have a lot more meat than I have room in my pot, and these take a little bit of room. So we want to get a nice browning. We don't want to. Uh, have them very close together. So this will take about two or three batches to do. You want to cook them for about one to two minutes on each side to unite. You get that nice brown coating. And uh, there you go. While my meat is sizzling over there, I am going to take two ribs of celery and I'm just going to do sort of a rough cut here on the celery. Throw it in a bowl. This is all going to go into the pot. And it said about one, one carrot, but I didn't want to buy a whole big bag of carrots for one carrot. And these, I just like to eat as they are. So I'm just going to put enough of these in my bowl that I think would make one big carrot. So I think that's good. And I'm going to snack on some of those a little later. <laughs> I know, my husband thinks I'm crazy because I really do think they help my eyesight. I know, I know, they say that it will, but I kind of take it to a crazy degree. Anyway, anyway, one yellow onion, one yellow onion. Yellow onions can be, you know, any size. <laughs> so this is a gigantic, super big yellow onion. So I am, that I've already cut a slice or two out of, so I think this is going to work just fine. So I'm going to do a rough cut on this onion as well. The, the only thing you really have to worry about is removing these little papery parts. I'm just going to barely cut off that center. So that's good. And use as much of it as you can because you're really not going to be, I don't think, eating this onion as much as it's flavoring the sauce. So. And hopefully it will all sort of disintegrate nicely right into the sauce. Uh, one day I'm going to be making uh, Anthony Bourdain's beef bourguignon. Oh, so good. So good. And the onions are the special ingredient of that dish. If you cook these long enough, they just disintegrate and just become you know, part of the delicious sauce. So yeah, I think I have enough onion here <laughs> to be like one regular onion. Still a lot of onion, but that's okay because we like that onion flavor. And we're also going to put some garlic in it. So right now I got to go turn my short ribs. Okay. The recipe calls for three to four cloves of garlic. I love this little thing. This is a nice little thing my sister-in-law gave me <laughs> that takes all the stuff that you don't want on the garlic clove right off. It stays right inside this little tube. So it's a really, really nice, nice little kitchen gadget. So I'm also just going to chop this garlic. And it's just going to go right in the pot with all the other veggies. Okay, there you go. That will get browned along with the onion and all of that other good stuff. Okay, i got to go turn my meat again. All right. I'm now going to pull up the last batch of short ribs. I'm going to turn the heat down. Just a, a tad, about medium, 
And there you have it. So these are my browned short ribs. And they are, uh, yeah, they smell good too. <laughs> so for the moment, I'm going to put them aside. And all the vegetables that we chop, I'm just going to put right into the pot. Right into the pot. I'm going to turn that heat down one more. So now I really am at medium. I have the have it on five. And now we're gonna cook this for about five minutes. We just want those vegetables to soften up a little bit. Well, everything looks like it's softened up pretty nicely. So now we're ready to start to add the fun stuff. So into the pot first is going to be a tablespoon of flour. Just sprinkle it all over. And then we're going to stir it in with the veggies. Next, we're going to add two tablespoons of tomato paste. All right. We're going to work that into okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in two tablespoons of maple sugar right on top now you if you don't have maple sugar you can use a dark brown sugar instead that'll be fine Okay, here we go. We're going to deglaze this pan now with two bottles of porter beer. So it's a very dark beer. It has lots of flavor. Whoops. And now I'm just going to deglaze the pan. So in it goes. Deglazing the pan is really just about putting liquid in there that's going to help you pick up all the little brown bits and all the items at the bottom of the pan and just incorporate all that into the, right into the sauce. So this will all come to a boil shortly, but for now, we've added our beer. That's the first liquid. Second liquid is going to be two cups of beef stock. And I'm not sure exactly how rich that is, so I'm actually going to add just maybe a half a teaspoon of better than bouillon, the beef flavor, just to give it a little richer flavor. Just let that go on in. Now, uh, about four sprigs of thyme right in there. <laughs> and it's one sprig of sage, so I just clip some from my little sage in the window. And in it goes. Now, oh, what the heck? We're going to strain it all out of there. So, in it goes. And now we're going to bring this to a hotter temperature. So, take that up. This is actually going to come to a boil. So, we're going to start heating up and then we're going to add our short ribs back in. One bay leaf from my plant in the window that goes in too. So now we're just, I did turn the heat up, so it's heating up in there. I'm gonna put my short ribs back in the pan and uh, we're gonna work at bringing this to a boil before we put it in our oven. So let's get all of those short ribs in there with all of this good stuff. All of our spices, all of our onion, carrot, and oh yeah, man, it's going to be really good. Really good. Okay. Getting crowded in here. <laughs> There's a lot of beef. A lot of beef. Okay. I'm just going to try and sit up the beef just a tiny bit so it's not 
completely submerged. And now we just, uh, oh, we're going to wait for this baby to boil, but it's already, it's already begun. This, uh, <laughs> this stove top really heats things up fast. <laughs> so we're going to wait for the full boil. And when that happens, we're going to cover it and then we're going to put it in our oven. Make sure when you uh, turn your oven on that you have all of your racks at the bottom. You know, or this is a really big pot, so it needs a lot of room in there. So not on the very bottom, but low enough that your pot's going to fit because this really does require a big pot. Now, of course, you can always half this recipe, but why would you really? I can't think of a reason why. Can't think of a reason why. You know, on a... Uh, on a cold night, it's a really nice meal to tuck into. Right, Mom? Hi, Mom. <laughs> so this is going to be so good. It's going to be so good. So we'll just wait till it brings it to a boil, and then we'll get it in the oven. Okay. <laughs> I, think we've, I think we've reached our boil. So now I'm just going to put the lid on it. I'm going to get it in the oven. Now the oven should be preheated to 275 degrees. And then we're just going to let this baby cruise. So, here we go. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, lordy, lordy. I mean, the pot itself is heavy with everything else. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, so now it's we set it and forget it, right? So we can, uh, it should take about three hours. So set your timer, go off and do whatever you need to do, and then just make sure it's falling off the bone tender when we pull it out. We'll take a look together after uh, three hours. So after three hours in the oven, I am pulling out my short ribs. And boy, they look so tender. You just give them a little squeeze and the meat just gives way. <laughs> That means they're perfect, perfect, perfect. So I say three hours, but it was probably more like 315. It's a little forgiving. You don't want to go too much longer because then your meat really totally could fall off the bone, which you don't really want. So uh, I'm pulling this out now because we're going to have to make some lovely gravy here. And you can't do that while the beef is in the pot. And you can't do that with all of these uh, vegetables. Remember, we had the carrots and the onions and all the spices and everything. So I'm just going to put this to the side. Let me just put this here. Oh, where to put anything. And here's my meat. Doesn't that look great? Looks great. So now I am going to drain all of the vegetables right out of the pot. And then I'm going to put the liquid right back in. So the first thing I'm going to do, there are some vegetables kind of stuck on the side. I'm just going to put them down in the pot. Oh, my goodness. It reduced. Oh, that looks, looks really good, you guys. It looks really good. Okay. So now you can follow me to the sink where I am going to drain all the vegetables out. So in my sink, I've got a, you know, I have a sieve over a big bowl and I'm just going to carefully pour right into the strainer. Woo, did you see those bones go in? <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Okay. There's still, there's still a little piece of garlic in here, still a couple of solids. So just get everything out of your pot it needs to come out of your pot and put it right into that strainer okay so that's good now there's still a lot of liquid in here so i'm going to take my spatula i'm going to make sure all of that wonderful liquid because that liquid is going to be that's gold baby that's like sauce for days, right? So we have to make sure we get all of it. 
Can dogs eat short rib bones? I know they would love to try. I know they would love to try. Okay. So I'm not really scraping anything down into it. I'm just making sure that all the liquid has gone out. And all I have left with are all of these vegetables and the spices that have given us really good flavor. So as soon as it stops dripping. I don't want to miss any of it. As soon as it stops, then I'll put this right back into our pot. Or actually, maybe I won't put it right back in the pot right this second because there is a, a different thing that we have to do here. And that is we're going to try and skim as much fat off of this as possible. So here we go. Goodbye to that. So now I can see pretty well here. Uh, there's a lot of fat in there. So if I was going to eat this tomorrow, I would just put this, you know, right in my refrigerator and I would let it sit overnight. And then this fat would all solidify and it would come to the top but we're gonna have some tonight so <laughs> i'm not gonna do that i'm going to try and skim off as much fat as possible so you can see the fat as it kind of you can see it glisten around the edges that's all fat and if you recall we put almost no oil in there. I just put enough just to put on the bottom of the pan as we cook the onions and the vegetables and the beef, because we braised the beef. This is all from the fat of the short ribs. So we're gonna do this for a few minutes and just get off as much fat as possible. All right, I've removed all the vegetables. I've skimmed off as much of the fat as I possibly could. Now I'm going to add about one tablespoon of Dijon mustard right into the pot. going to stir that in, and we are going to reduce this sauce just a little bit more. Uh, we're going to be looking to make, whoops, making a nice, uh, a nice gravy. So I'm going to heat this up and then reduce it just a little bit. And then at the very end, we can add maybe a tablespoon of cornstarch and it will help thicken that up a little bit. And once it's thickened up a little bit, I'm gonna take my beef, put it right back in the pot so it gets all nicely coated with that sauce and that will be good. So now I'm just gonna, here we go, here we go. It's heating right back up. I want that Dijon mustard to, Get in there. And we do, I do, would like this to reduce down just a tiny bit. And before we go much further, hold on. I just kind of want to taste the sauce and see where it is. There's still, uh, there's still fat in here. You can totally tell. <laughs> But I really, I got off as much as I could. Even after I think I make it into the gravy, uh, I'll still be able to skim some fat off for tomorrow. Okay. Give us a little taste. Oh. Mm. That's really good. That's really good. I think, though, that I might add another little grind or two of salt. I'm also going to add a little bit of pepper. Mm, well, that's good. As we start to turn this into a sauce. So we're just going to let this cook uh, on a fairly high heat because we want it to almost boil. We want it, some of that moisture to reduce in there. And then we'll then we'll see where we are.
<laughs> and here we are. We are at the moment of truth. So I'm going to take some just made mashed potatoes. Not whipped potatoes, mashed potatoes. I'm going to put that right in the center. And now I am going to pick out a nice short rib. <laughs> Put it right right on top now i'm going to take some of the lovely gravy that we have here and continue to pour right over it oh yeah <laughs> first of all oh that is so good that is so good so here it is here it is i'm gonna take a bite Oh, you see how that meat just pulls right off. Oh, so good. Get a little mashed potato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is what I'm talking about. That is really delicious. Really good. And it's, you know what? It's going to be even better tomorrow. These things were always better on day two. So we're having a little bit tonight. We're going to have it again tomorrow. Delicious. Mm. If you want this recipe, mm. go to almost-martha.com where you'll find this and all the other recipes that we've done. And uh, I really hope you make it because it's, it, it's easy, right? It's easy. It's delicious. You'll get more than one meal out of it. It's great. So thank you so much for joining. I really do hope you make it. If you have any questions, just attach it to the video or come to my website and ask a question, but I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Bye, Mom. I'll see you later. I'm going to go eat dinner now. Okay. Bye. <laughs>